All right. Hey, welcome everybody to the very first, the very first number one episode of Raw Thoughts with the Chopstick Guys, where your thoughts are raw, the talk is raw, my feet feel raw after so much walking yesterday. Yeah, we did it quite a bit. My body was not ready for bending down and getting on my knees. And I'll tell you one thing, if people say like sports photography, that they can do it, man, it's difficult. And Well, it's difficult for two old guys. Yeah, but I don't know anybody, that stuff you lean on out there, that pavement or whatever, the, the concrete they're on, that hurt last night so yeah, yeah well let's let's talk a little bit about why we why you were laying down on the concrete last night we're today's discussion is all about led versus flash right and the hybrid of them too like would would that be ideal if if you could get something that was both in one right this led technology which we love yeah we've become flash which we love right? yeah can we do both right is is there something out there that can do it yep. the answer is there's something that's being developed, right? And that's, we, we were fortunate to uh, to get some beta units of a hybrid light. Pretty cool. Yeah, it, but, uh, you know, we also find it, it doesn't come without challenges, anything new. Yeah. But, you know, when we first started shooting with LED, you know, we talked about this recently, you know, your first thought was, this is stupid. LED, I yeah. Kept saying, it's just not bright enough. It's not bright enough. Why would I do it? But fast forward to CLX 10 and uh man suddenly we've got lights now that are bright enough yeah, I mean, some people you're talking about CLX 10 that doesn't mean anything to most of our crowds yeah. but... so again the CLX 10 which has been kind of our light of choice for this last year made by light in motion correct so this is a 10,000 lumen constant LED light and there's all kinds of different modifiers that you know we can take this off and we've got you know Fresnels to put on there to focus the light and get throw it further we've got little domes that we can fill a room with light like the, it's become one of our go-to lights it, which is which is the light that i said was stupid yeah before we started using them actually i think it was the eight it was even before the cl we the first one we looked at their their most their, their brightest light was eight thousand lumens yeah. at that time and uh you know which it, once we actually used it and it, you know what this is a funny thing do you find this happens with everything in life, not just photography gear, but people talk about stuff in a negative way before they've even seen it, before it's out, before they've used it, like like we did, right? That's stupid. Did we, we ever use it? somebody use it, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and we maybe never used it, but we already had this opinion that it's stupid. You know, like a new car comes out, someone says, that's stupid. There's no way the Tesla is going to be able to perform like it does. Well, guess what? You take a ride in a Tesla and you're like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, you know, all this different stuff and new technology, it's, it seems like it's always like that. Like people poo-poo everything. I think people just like to be negative in life. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, again, to sound like a, a light and motion commercial, but, you know, when they also came out, we went, it's too expensive, too expensive. Yeah. Well, that's because we were saying, I can get a Chinese light for half the price. Well, yeah, this is a U.S. manufactured as a quality piece of equipment and, uh, add, you know, products have to be sourced here, that kind of thing. So it's easy to just go, oh, price is the issue or, yeah. but yeah, like you said, without even using it. So, so last night you, you talked about your knees hurting from grinding on the cement all night, but like last night we, we got these, these lights to test, right? These are hybrid lights. So they're, they're a flash and they're a constant LED light. Well, I, I'm not going to say they're necessarily a flash. They're a burster, right? So they, they can burst this light, this LED at, at 20 pops per second. I mean, it's fast. You know, some of these new, like the, some of the Sony cameras, some of the Canons, that they can shoot 20, 30 frames per second. And this will keep up with it. This will keep up with it. So, you know, we're thinking, oh, this is a pretty cool idea because we, we love that constant light from high quality LED. We love flash. <laughs> can they both work together? Yeah. So we, we thought, what a better way. We got some friends that are great skateboarders um they live right by you right so you're like hey guys come on out we've got to test these lights in something that would be kind of a dynamic situation that has a lot of movement fast pace people having fun we thought what a what a better way to do this so we brought them out there they had a great time us not so much <laughs> so, like and this, this is again this is raw thoughts these are this is not pre-planned we we don't script this talk at all this is us like thinking out of this cabeza 
to uh, balding round cabezas, but you know, we're thinking like, okay, what, what does that look like? What did we have a good time? Mark, did we have a good time last night? Yeah, you know, all in all, yeah, I had a good time. I always have a good time shooting pictures, but anytime you go out and take pictures, it's exactly. a good it, you know, it's that old adage about people say about like fishing, the you know, the worst day of fishing is better than the best day of work. Or... Exactly. But then you have a big crack in it, better known as the butt, right? So, but, <laughs> but yeah, but what? It, it lacked creativity. Hmm. I think. Okay, so, so expand that. Why, why do you say that? What? Because anytime you do something new, you're, you're having to learn how to adjust to it. Um, again, and I'm not just saying, oh, here's a, a one light over another, a new brand. It's a whole new way of shooting. Like a whole new world. It became Sorry. technical. So your brain's just going into this technical mode of, Okay, how do I get it with the right pool of light and how much and how do I change my setting? All those things to where, because it was new, we never had that flow where we went, I figured it out and it's working for me. And then you get creative. We never got to that point all night long that the light was going down. So we were having to raise ISOs and you, you just, you never got into that creative rhythm. Right. So I think, I think the problem is, is maybe the technology is, isn't quite there yet, right? Because we're used to using the CLX-10, which you just showed and just talked about, which is 10,000 lumens. It's very bright, right? We, we can actually use that LED in the daytime, which is, is rare for an LED light to be able to use it in the daytime. Yeah. So this, when this light, though, was yeah. about half the power in the constant mode and the same power in the burst mode. So we really kind of struggle because we're so used to getting that big, punchy power out of this thing. It yeah. didn't have it. And so we did, like you just said, we had to really rethink how we did everything. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the idea is one reason we love to shoot with flash is we love to darken that ambient light mm -hmm. down and mm -hmm. maybe underexpose it even a tiny bit. So we get nice blue sky. We love a good drama. That's Lots of cool. drama. And then we pop light onto our subject and yep. they snap because again, we've got shadows that are creating this drama. We couldn't do that last night because if you don't have enough power, all you can do is kind of fill in some of the dark spots. And so something has to give. The skies don't go really blue. Like I had to work really hard to have a white and pale blue sky last night. Yeah. You know, I think we, we both went through our pictures, right? I mean, I got home at midnight last night. So I just, I scrubbed them and put them up on our, our picture holding spot. But like, I, I thought the pictures looked good. I think that the, the subjects we took a picture of, they'll be happy, right? Because we're going to give them all the pictures. They're going to be, oh, there's the best pictures I ever got of me skateboarding. But they didn't look great because they didn't have our look, right? So for I'm not going to say that this light is not for, I'm going to say it's not for everybody, but I'm not going to say it's not for anybody Correct. because it might be for somebody, right? But for us in our look, I was really challenged with getting our look out of this light. In fact, I never got our look out of this light last night. Did you, did you find that to be true? Never. I don't have a single photo that like, you remember even the end of the night, I was like, these are people that live in my neighborhood. I want to get them some cool portraits. So we said, no, don't. I, I even said, want me to go back and get us something bigger. And you're like, no, we're shooting with these lights. So stick with it. So I threw an umbrella on and I got that light like two yeah. feet from them but I still couldn't get that dramatic look that I like that's, that says it's my style. They're still good photos, nothing wrong with them, but they're just not my style. I've said it a number of times. I think people who love, like, because we've learned with the Stella, with the CLX 10s, it gets, can get us close to our preferred style yes. in, in a fairly, you know, light environment. When the light starts to, to go down, yes, we can create that really punchy look that we love when the light is well you said a key word when the light goes down when the light goes down yeah otherwise we, we kind of co coined this this term right it's natural light on steroids correct so that's what i was getting to. i was going to go but we've always said the people who love will love the clx 10 are people who are natural light shooters mm -hmm. and all they're doing is going how do i just get my pictures a little punchier right because just by adding that light quarter stop a light to a face and warm that skin up and fill in the dark shadows under somebody's eyes. That's the difference between a great photo and an epic photo. Like mm -hmm. it, it just, 
we hear it all the time, right? How do I get my pictures better? You know, this person's so much better. And a lot of times we go, well, they're really good at Photoshopping. That doesn't mean they're cheating or anything like that. They're just really good at post-processing or they're using light. Yep. And you can't get natural light shooters to understand that a lot of times. But we, we have a photographer friend, right? Who, you know, we're, we're not going to name her here, but she is probably one of the best senior portrait photographers we both know. Like she's yeah. really, really good, but she's, she's pretty much a natural light shooter. She actually just recently got a CLX-10, but she told us last week, she got it two months ago. She told us last week, it's been in the trunk for two months. She doesn't pull it out. Yeah. Gallery the other day of these pictures, wondering like, why, why? She just wasn't happy with them. Why, why are they not good? Which she we tried, actually, she tried the CLX the one, that on that shoot. Yeah, for one picture. For one thing, got her gun shy. Yeah, because she struggled a little bit because she wasn't used to using it. But like, and that was the one picture that actually looked good. And the, the, well, no, I'm not gonna say that. That looked better. It, no, it, the skin tones we thought were the best skin tones. Yeah. What we could see. Yeah. So you know the the moral of the story was like she, she's a fantastic natural light shooter. If she would use natural light on steroids by using the light, the Stella light, like it would it would change her world. Yeah. The the problem is she would almost be dangerous because she'd be so good if she improved that because her pictures are, are good anyways, but. We won't talk about it today because like you and I had talked about, you know, I always said everybody, it, it's such an old book and, and it's kind of dated as far as Photoshop goes, but it was called Skin by a guy named Lee Varus. And to me, it's the Bible on skin color mm. and, and understanding people's skin tones and you probably color. have to, to be careful if you Google that because just a book named Skin exactly. might pull a bunch of other stuff. Skin, but yeah, and it just goes into the whole what's behind, you know, by the numbers, figuring out skin tones. But then there's a cultural thing of skin tones, and and we're all, uh, what's the word? Like, we're all biased towards how we view skin tones. Like, you don't usually tell people, you don't hear people say, "Can you make me look paler in a photo?" No, it's always, "Oh, can you give me a tan? Can you warm up my skin? Can you?" And so if you wrestle with, you have a certain style that always looks a certain way, anything different. And that's where we struggle is yeah. with lights, with the LEDs. We're like, that's not our style. That's not the color temperature I'm used to or trying to get. So it doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just a matter of something's different. And you're like, ah, oh, that's not my photo. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like I tell everybody, it's funny, at workshops, and I always get pushback by somebody. I'm like, change your, like, we're shooting with flash. I'm always like, change your white balance to flash. And they're like, well, I can do it in post. But to me, if I don't do it as I'm shooting and see it warm and inviting, and I, I lose the creative edge mm. because my, my brain is just going, something doesn't look right. It's very blue. It's very magenta-y. And I would rather get it right in my camera yeah. than go, well, yeah, later I can just change that. And there are times we have to do that. You know, we're switching back and forth, but there's a mental aspect that plays and that throws you. Yep. So and I, that's I, a big I, issue with, that's why I think natural light shooters will love shooting with LEDs, flash shooters. If you grew up on strobist and Zacharias and you know, that one light dramatic, you know, dark in the background, you're going to struggle. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but you're going to struggle like we did in the beginning. So, so let's go back though to the, the actual the first question is you know, LED versus flash, in the hybrid approach, does it work? Like, based on what you saw yesterday, give me your your raw thought. Does it work? It's, is it ideal? It. it I think if the power level could be increased, then it is ideal. Like the first time we had heard about this concept of what, like, what if you could have a light constant this bright that could also, well, all, the word I would use is flash. So it's kind of like having this speed light, like, like, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. But I'm also not an engineer and, and it's easy to go make that brighter. Just make it work, would you? right because you know? nobody else has ever been able to do it before just make this one do it yeah you know because it's easy for us to look at a speed light and go 
Well, that's just little. Add that speed light onto the onto the constant light. It's not that much bigger at yeah. all out of fit. And there's, but yeah, we we've learned over the years working with factories that what we think is like, why are you doing that? Well, because there's 20 reasons. And uh, you know, there's a lot of software that goes yeah. behind things, there's a lot of sourcing, there's a lot like just make it's it's in that the argument of like just make cars get 200 miles to the gallon just make it happen just make it happen yep you know so, so. Here, here's the interesting thing like at the same time that we got these hybrid lights we also got a product from westcott and in, in you know we've been using our our fj400 mono lights which by the way if you're out there and you're you're looking for a, a great flash right different yep. from the led but just you want something that gets a wallop of power fj 400 two yeah. thumbs up and if you put up your For thumbs up, photographer it ooh. will do everything you need it to do it is a great great light and very very economical and one one thing i want to say their trigger system hands down the best trigger system out there and why is that because it doesn't matter what i'm shooting exactly i shoot, I shoot almost all nikon but i do have a sony you shoot all Nikon and you have a Fuji. Like mm -hmm. it literally, that same trigger comes off my Nikon onto my Sony and I just select Sony and now I'm shooting and everything works. Yep. But if well, with, with Sony, they, you have to put on that little, there's a little hot shoe adapter. Yeah. Hot shoe yeah. but, but like if you had Panasonic, if you had Fuji, if you have Olympus, if you have Canon, if you have Sony, if you have uh, Nikon, the yeah. one trigger runs them all now you know we do a ton of workshops and so it's awesome like we bring out the fj 400 i can throw that trigger on anybody's right. camera and it works and it works really well and it's really easy to use yeah and the other so, thing that we've as, as workshop people is the fact also that i can be shooting sony you can be shooting your nikon the same light and you'll shoot i'll shoot you'll shoot where most systems we've ever used is you'll shoot then I got to take a picture and go, ah, what's wrong with this? Everything's, oh, yeah, because yeah, the trigger now is it took a shot to get it talking or I've got to hit a test button and it's like, oh, now I'm talking. Yeah, everything seems to talk to each other well. So so they we, we got a an FJ200, so like the baby brother of the FJ400 and the an FJ70 like to 200 lens. I kind of look at it as like the size of a Arizona iced tea can. OK. I mean, it's almost identical to that. It's the same. I just want to drink that FJ 200. It's so tasty, but the, the, and then we got an FJ 80, which I wouldn't call the little brother, but all it is, is it's a Westcott speed light. Right. Here is the huge thing about these lights. And I start to get kind of excited about this now. So we, we did a shoot the other night that we were doing a review of the FJ 200, the baby brother of the 400. You, we get we walk like a half mile to get out to this location through the dust and the weeds. And, yeah, get out my, there. My truck was parked all the way back, far away. You open up your bag, and you're like, "Uh oh, in my West cop bag." <laughs> I'm like, trigger. "What's up?" You're like, "My trigger is in the car." You're like, "Oh no!" And and you were already like huffing and puffing. You know, you, you did not want to walk back to the car. And I was like, I didn't want to walk back to the car. So what did we do? This is really cool. I said, hey, I've got an idea. You know, it works. We can take this speed light, the FJ80. You can use that as a trigger. And I'm not talking about an optical sensor, like a slave type sensor. It's an actual trigger. It's like an actual trigger. So the, the back of the speed light transforms into the menu system of the trigger. And yeah. I can use it as an actual trigger. So I can change all the settings on any of my Westcott products from the speed light yep. without an extra trigger. So you simply popped that one on your, on your hot shoe, on your camera, just like you would be firing it as a flash. But now you were just using it as the trigger function. Yeah. Super, super cool. And then it actually, I actually thought it was kind of cool because I actually was able to use it as a second flash as well. Yeah. Is you're shooting outside and I was able to and like light other rocks up and then use the key light for the model and so it's yeah it's what a flawless system it seems like it works really well and um 
But again, yeah, that's I, not to say you know, like like as much as we praise that and, and that is our style of shooting, I'll tell you, we we love to run and gun in you know around San Francisco or you know, we, sometimes we get down into LA places they don't like you to put a light stand. Yep. The FJ 400 is a big light to carry around. You know, this isn't. But the 200. The 200 is a very small light. It's very small. You know, about the same size same as size. this. And. Uh, so, you know, and, and we're going to be putting out a full review on the 200, but just, you know, like a little, a little preview of it. It, it, it works really, really, really well. Yeah. Like I'm really impressed with it. But if that wasn't it, enough reallys altogether, then I don't know what is. But. but I'm saying, so we're talking about flash versus LED, marrying the two, because the, you, you can't talk about LED without talking about mirrorless cameras, which everything now mm -hmm. is being made is mirrorless. That's where this has an advantage over. So, yeah. So talk about that for a second. Like, so here's what, what I have a hard time, and you can kind of, I want you to talk about this. Like when we shoot between our Stella lights, constant LEDs, then we switch to flash. Like my brain has to get rejiggered because totally. what you just said was the big benefit is the, the fact of I can, what you see is what you get with yeah. the LED, right? Where the flash is, it takes a while to develop the eye of like, when I fire this, I know what it's going to look like. And that's why it's, it's like when we have workshops, either photographers or models, they're looking around going, I know what it looks like here. You're taking a picture of me in this light. But what they don't know is we're darkening all the ambient light and we're lighting them and it looks dramatic. They haven't seen that. We haven't seen it until we fire that light. And then we have to look at the back of the screen and go, yeah, it did what yeah, we it, wanted. It becomes though, it becomes muscle memory or intuitive. Correct. That you, you start to realize, like I, I can shoot with flash nowadays. I, I know what the settings are going to do. Like I've got it all, it's just built into my head. I, I don't have to think. But with, with, with LED, I don't. have been doing that for 15 years. Yeah, and it's been only through, through shooting all the time. LED, you can be brand new to light and you can instantly understand what the light is doing. Right, you put it up there and you're like, oh, I need to lessen this, I, the light's too bright or I'm going to change a setting on my camera and you just see it happen. And that's only because of mirrorless because yeah. your optical viewfinder is seeing whatever function that you're changing on your camera, whatever setting is showing up in real time through that viewfinder. I don't have to wait for the picture to come up in the viewfinder in the screen. And you don't have to do it for five or 10 or 15 years to develop the muscle memory. It's instantaneous. Like you can become a great photographer with light yep. very quickly with constant and with a mirrorless. Because even that, how many times do you, even in your DSLR, you have to make adjustments of where your light's placed? Because you you go, I'm going to nail the settings. You get the settings. You're like, oh, I need to bring that light around now. Click. Oh, it's too far around. Oh, no, I do like the split yep. lighting. Whereas, man, with mirrorless, I just go, yeah, bring that light around. And yeah, I just yeah. look through my camera and go, yeah, right there. Stop. Yep. Click, 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 click. And I'm just shooting like crazy. Yep. So. So I think the big, the big thing, you know, just keep the lookout for the, the review on the FJ200. It, it'll be out in the next, we've got a bunch of stuff coming up in the next few weeks. So it, it'll be a few weeks before we, we put it out. But um, I, I was impressed with it. I've always been impressed with the FJ400. It's just been, it's been a great light ever since we first got it. We've been impressed with it. The build quality is good. One thing I, I do want to say, I'm going to give some props to Westcott. Later on in that shoot, what happened to our FJ200? Um, you know, it's so funny. I was going to say, I became frustrated because I kept going, I don't know, my trigger. It's got to be this speed light. I kept going, it's not firing for me. And you were like, it was firing fine for me. And I was going, it's not firing. And I turned the speed light on, then back off. And you lowered the light and, and all of a sudden it fired and you put it back up. And I'm like, it's not firing. Well, we had put too big of a modifier on that light. The, it, the whole front end. <laughs> yeah. But we did exactly what we saw their, their pros doing. Yep. Their pros are using a medium size box on there, but it had the wrong adapter. 
but you can't see that and they don't tell you that in their stuff they just in their literature said this lights for a small soft bottle. yeah i mean like i had once we we are alerted to that problem i found where it did say it so you know right. bad on us but what i want to say is like so it 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 pulled the the head off, off and of the we couldn't get it back on it showed a, an error code on the back of the screen so like we the light broke which was kind of a bummer because the shoot was going incredible and it was like ah now what do we do so yeah. we, we switched gears right we we changed to different different lights but we actually started shooting with the fj 400 but it was in the middle of one of our review sections of our video but yeah so you're reviewing a light that suddenly we're like oh it's failed but it was our own fault yeah so I contacted Westcott the next day and said, hey, this is this is exactly what happened. I sent him pictures, told him what we did. Big hats off to Westcott. First of all, they didn't berate us for like screwing yeah. up. <laughs> they, they said, hey, you know, just so you know, and they sent me a picture of the instructions and it was circled in red. This is for this softbox. You need to use this one, not that. And they said, we're sending you out another one with a shipping label to send this one back. Like, how awesome is that? And, and it was shipped the next day. Yeah, the next day. And so big hats off. Like I I, I want to praise them because it's rare in today's world and today's economy that you're finding companies that are very responsive for customer service. Yeah. And so speaking of customer right. service, like we were talking the other day, who's their main competitor is a company like a Godox. Yeah. They don't even have customer service. No, but you have none. It doesn't none. exist. They're a Chinese company that doesn't have any like U.S. presence up there. There's not a U.S. customer service line or a Chinese service line you call. Mm -hmm. It's just, no, you bought our product. Yeah. So I know a lot of people are, were very frustrated because if they do have a problem, they can't get it fixed. But I, man, Westcott, great job. Like just, I, I can't tell you how pleased I was with what they did for us. So yeah, their stuff's imported, but you have a, a company in Ohio that you're talking to yep. that backs the product that's quick to receive. I think actually it's like it's are they one of the oldest photography companies out there like they're over 100 years old FJ Westcott yeah so they've been around for a long time and it's still a nice tight community in their company but it is great things the yep. thing is it's their products are designed and built by working photographers yeah and that's why over these last you know 10 years that we've been really aware of Westcott it, it's always because you know, Jerry Jehonas came up with the ice light. Somebody else came up with that eye light or, you know, just, and they're all usable products because yeah. a photographer said, I have a problem. Let's make a solution. And they came up with a solution mm -hmm. rather than an engineer saying, I don't know if there's a problem, but I'm going to make you a solution. Like, yeah. And, and the thing about Westcott too, it, I think, you know, before I had some Westcott products that I liked, but they were expensive. Yeah. The Apollos for, for yeah. what we were using them for. Yeah. It just seemed expensive. But the, the pricing on the lights now is so competitive and actually less expensive than most of the competitors. And it's just great stuff. Yep. And, and they, I, I, all the problems that we always had, like I do that if I, every time I bought a new Apollo for a speed light, that the first time I shoot it, it's going to fall over and break one of the arms. Mm -hmm. They finally now, you know, everything's fiberglass, the rods instead. Oh, it's a big difference. Aluminum and, and things are durable. And so, yeah. So you... I, I said something earlier, which actually I, I just thought about when you're talking about the rods, like, and I don't know why this like tied together in my brain, but I said, you know, shooting all the time. And what, you know, the thing I told you yesterday or this morning, I can't remember, we, we've talked so much, but like I said, Mark, I, I think you've lost some of your mojo. Yeah. And, you know, and I didn't mean it in a bad way because I mean, we're, our relationship has been built on honesty, integrity, and, and transparency, right? So like we can tell each other anything yep. and we may be frustrated by what the other person says, but we don't get mad at each other in that sense. So like I said, I think you lost your mojo and I think you would kind of agree like because yeah, it, shooting all the time, right? And that's where that ties together, shooting all the time. What, what, why do you think? It's funny because, you know, we've done a couple uh, uh, webinars, not podcasts, but webinars lately for people. And one of the things we've talked about is you got to be shooting all the time. Mm -hmm. So what, six, I don't know how long it's been, six, eight weeks ago. Middle of July. Middle of July, first part of the middle of July, I ended up getting COVID. I ended up spending five days in the hospital. Uh, it, it's been a long journey back. And so 
coming out of that, my wife ended up in the hospital as well. And, you know, just school starting with kids and being sick and like, I just couldn't get out and shoot. And so we get out the other night when we, you know, was three, four nights ago when we finally shot with the FJ 200s, like I struggled all night long because I felt like I was relearning everything again. And part of it was because I've been shooting so much LED that it's a different way of thinking. So I had to rejigger my brain there. Mm -hmm. And, and again, it's what I said earlier, when you get into the technical side and it's also given me a little more where, where I'm going to be a little easier, probably on people in the workshops, you know, where I, I do it lovingly, I think, but you know, I'm always like, don't do that. You know, it's, it's like a frustration, but it's like, I get it. I, I have a better understanding of, cause it's been so long since I've been in that learning process of, yep. When your brain is only thinking about the technical side, you can't get creative. And, and that's where, you know, I've always talked about, you know, finding advantages. And I'm like, why are these people not getting that that opening in the wall is where the head should go? You know, it's beautiful. Why are they putting them in a tree or a telephone pole? Like move. It's because they're thinking technical. They're still going, oh, are my settings right? They haven't got to that point where they can just go, yeah, settings are muscle memory. Now it's all creativity. And then last night, oh my goodness, I had no creativity because I kept going back and forth from constant to, you know, to the flash burst modes to, you know, raising my ISOs to just, I, I never got to that point where I could just go, ah, take a deep breath and let's get creative. Yeah. And if it doesn't, if you can't get to that point and get to where the back of your camera says, yes. That's the kind of picture I want. You never go, that's what I want. Now I'm going to get the person in the right place. And it comes down to what we said, shooting all the time. And it's not it's always five, six weeks. And, it, and I <laughs> fell backwards. And, and I know, I know there's going to be people that are listening to this that are going to go, yeah, but I've got nothing to shoot. Well, you know what? Bad on you because we're talking about shooting all the time. That does not mean shooting a beautiful model all the time that does not mean shooting automobiles if that's what you do it doesn't mean shooting flowers if that's what you do like it's shooting everything all the time just to keep your mojo going right you got it you got to get your yourself motivated to click the shutter we we have videos out about don't be lazy it is so easy as a photographer like after you've gone through a transition time like you just went through where it's challenging to get your mojo back because you you get lazy right and it's not that you set out to be lazy but you just you're like oh that's it's so hard to go out and shoot because it's too smoky it's too you know with california fires it's too hot it's 150 degrees outside like all that kind of stuff is excuse but shoot something indoors do a still life right take pictures of your dog it doesn't matter pick up the camera and just go because without that that muscle memory it's like if, if you exercise, right? I've been exercising a ton, you know, just lost a lot of weight, but pretty rigid exercise program. If I stopped right now, all the development that I've built goes away pretty quick. Yep. If this is a life change and it's the same thing for photog photography, it's life change. You got to keep shooting. Yep. And it also, again, it just, like I said, it, it gives me a better appreciation for people who are learning. Mm-hmm. Just like you have a better appreciation for people that are very overweight because you're like going, man, I wasn't obese, but it's so hard to exercise. It is painful. It's hard. It, it just, it's uncomfortable. It's all those things, but you just do it anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you, you have to have that mindset and it's the same thing. I want to get good at photography. So how do I get better at landscape photography? I got an idea or landscape. Yeah, go ahead and take some landscapes. Yeah. You know, and, and start going, I got to wake up earlier. I got to stay out later. I've got to not the, take the easy way of, well, I've got a little bit of time after work. And so from four 30 to five 30, I can shoot some photos while the sun's yeah. straight up. It's not going to work. So this is interesting. When you said you could get up earlier, this has nothing to do with photography, but it has to do with motivation. Is that so, you know, the, the movie, the Disney movie, The Jungle Book came out a few weeks back, right? Which is a pretty good movie. I don't know if you got a chance to see it, but it's it's pretty good. And but it features The Rock. And actually, I really love the guy, right? He's he's gone from being this tough guy to kind of a fun loving kind of guy in, in movies. But I've seen a bunch of stuff about him recently. 
and it it's you know i saw him do a, a little like tedx talk on it he gets up every morning at 4 a.m every morning at 4 a.m he's like this is why i do it because it allows me an hour of exercise when i first get up uninterrupted and if i do it right away at four in the morning it gets done for the day and then i'm done then i can have a good meal after that and i spend a half an hour thinking about what i'm going to do for the day yeah. and so so then i've used up two hours and it's only 6 a.m and i've gotten all kinds of stuff accomplished so he says he says i'm a list maker i'm a checker right so he checks those things off workout breakfast thinking or meditation right and so he's he's like thinking about that for the day and it's only 6 a.m like how many of us get no. three things accomplished in the first two hours of, of the day no because we're lazy right we're not motivated but think if you if you did that not that i want to get up at 4 a.m but if you did that in the first two hours let's say you get up at six and by eight o'clock you've already checked off three very powerful things you've got the full day left to just make it happen. And it, it actually really was, for me, it was motivating to think, man, if he can do it, and that's how he just keeps himself motivated and transformed, mm -hmm. we can all do it. Yeah, there's a reason why people that are at the top of their game are at the top of their game. Mm -hmm. Whether it's actors, whether it's professional athletes, whether it's artists, whatever, it's because they have that self-motivation. Work at their craft. They, yeah, exactly. Take that right to photography. As photographers, we we truly are. That's why our mantras don't be lazy because we are in that group. Like photographers seem to be some of the laziest people. Absolutely. Ourselves, you know, because we're like, I just want to get better. It should be easy. But think about the think about the photographers that right now are at the top of their game. Why are they at the top of the game? Because they're working hard. Yeah. They're shooting every day. That that senior photographer that we were talking about is shooting all the time she's shooting every day and you know what she asked us for a critique and she says i want you to be completely honest with me because that's the only way i'm going to learn like she motivated me to think okay what am i doing right now to better myself what am i doing today to better my photography who yeah. am i asking for critique like that's awesome so with that i think we can kind of wrap the, yeah. the talk but Hopefully, hopefully that's motivating for you guys. It's just get out there and shoot, 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 shoot. Learn, learn, learn. Like, you know, we're learning these new lights. You got to learn. Tomorrow we might shoot with them and say, I love them, right? Because we, yeah. we kind of got them dialed in. But we were there with LEDs in the beginning. Yep. Don't like them. And then it's, wow, these are amazing. So, so we did it, man. First episode of Raw Thoughts. They were thoughtful. They were raw. Now it's time for sushi. Ooh, it's getting that time. Yeah, I would like to eat sushi someday. Well, it's not fun. really on my menu anymore. But until next time, don't forget. Say, say sushi. sushi.